the last part of the training prepares you to go back to your program and create a plan of inclusion. The first step in creating your plan for inclusion is to assess your program's willingness and ability to accept students with exceptionalities. Consider having staff complete a self-assessment of your program to gauge whether or not educators are using multiple teaching strategies to engage all types of learners. Be bold and fearless in your assessment, and most importantly, be honest about what you see and hear. Prioritize the areas for improvement, whether that be professional development for educators, working with families, or creating a program-wide behavior plan or system for positive reinforcement. When you begin goal setting, work together as a staff to create team goals, time limited, exciting, achievable, and measurable. Goals should have a start and an end date where you measure progress over a given amount of time. Exciting goals are goals that are motivational and inspirational and keep staff engaged over the long term. Achievable goals must be realistic and attainable. Measurable goals will have a specific outcome in mind and a way to measure success. They won't be vague or open-ended like to have more fun or to be nicer to my colleagues. Here are some examples of strong team goals. For example, children with disabilities participate in recreation three out of four times in January, or a plan for inclusion is in place for every child with an IEP by March. Feel free to read the last two examples on your own and begin thinking about what a team goal would look like for your program. In order to create a strong work plan, Number one, set your team goal with staff during a team meeting. Number two, break the goal down into manageable, bite-sized steps. Number three, assign a point person to be in charge of implementation and to follow up on the steps and progress. Number four, identify the resources needed for each step. Do you need to connect with a specialist? Is there supplies that you need or equipment? Or would you need to create some sort of evaluation or observation tool to measure your progress? Number five, determine the timeline and determine the benchmarks along the way. Plan your staff meetings to coincide with those benchmarks so staff can report back on their progress. Number six, come up with an evaluation plan. Choose an assessment tool that makes sense for your goal. For example, if you're trying to measure family satisfaction, a survey or interview would be the best way to measure that goal. Lastly, determine who will be in charge of the data analysis and determine whether or not you can share your results as a staff or even on a wider scale with the greater public. Get the conversation about inclusion started. Talk with colleagues, families, supervisors, employees, and community agencies and follow these pieces of advice when you're having those conversations. Most importantly, take on a mindset of enthusiasm and excitement. If you approach inclusion as if it's a requirement, your program culture will suffer. Making accommodations for exceptionalities won't only benefit those students, but rather, everyone will benefit from those changes, and it will make your program stronger. Stick to a solution-oriented mindset and communicate to staff that there is a solution for every problem, which of course there is. Create some talking points for staff to use when having those conversations. Role play those conversations and practice talking about why this is important to you and your program.